Welcome again to Faces of Sterling. I'm your host, Terry Ackerman, Town Administrator in Sterling. And each show we profile someone in the community who's making a valuable contribution. Today, our guest is David Hurlbut, our Fire Chief and Emergency Management Director. Welcome, David. Thank you. So, Chief, a lot of people know you as the fire chief. Uh, tell us a little about your career in the fire service and particularly how you became the emergency management director in Sterling. Sure. Uh, I came to Sterling in 1985 and joined the Call Fire Department and uh, became the town's first full-time firefighter in 1997. And soon after that, in October of 2001, I became fire chief. Uh, part of becoming a fire chief also incorporates the emergency management position in Sterling. Uh, some people probably remember as civil defense director, mm -hmm. uh, but now it's emergency management director. And part of what uh, requirements are involved with that is training in national incident management system, classes on uh, incident command. And a lot of it over the years is just through networking and attending quarterly meetings that Massachusetts emergency management, known as MEMA, holds. And uh, there's nothing better than live training and as over the years that we've seen we've had some incidents in town that have really required more from the emergency management director than the fire chief absolutely itself. yeah so chief what are some of the most dramatic emergency events that you've been involved with in sterling i think uh, what started the first real true emergency event was the ice storm of 2008 and since then we've had some hurricanes come through. We prepared for Hurricane Earl in 2010, which didn't really produce much more than some wind and rain. We had uh, Hurricane uh, Irene that came through in September of 2011. Uh, that one had more of a significant impact in Sterling. We had the Nor'easter of October of 2011. So those were some of the in large storms which impacted the town and the residents. And I believe the preparation is early notification, early warning. It allowed residents the time to prepare for some of this. Uh, the residents we've determined are very resilient, so the more notice they have, the better. Um, and it also made us better as an emergency management as far as preparing, whether it be through sheltering, through notification systems, through some of the equipment and uh, techniques that we do. But each storm, is we've gotten a little better at managing these. And as a result, I think that the residents have fared very well through all of the storms. Yes, they have. So, Chief, you and your department have been very successful in obtaining grant funding. What are some of the major items you've been able to purchase with grants? Yeah, through some, a lot of the major storms that have come through, the federal government has made local grants available to the communities. Uh, they're called emergency management planning grants. And through that, we've been able to build our emergency operations center, which is located at the fire station. Uh, we have some large monitors that allows us to uh, monitor the weather real time. It allows us to log into web emergency operations center so we can see throughout the state what other communities are getting impacted with, what kind of resources they're pulling up. Mm -hmm. And most recently, we've implemented a whiteboard uh, into it. A lot of the schools have it, but it's a smart board. It's an electronic smart board. And what that we've done on that is the last storm, Hurricane Sandy, we were able to pull up a town map and show through barricade systems or pictures of light trucks or DPW trucks, we're able to drag mm -hmm. these certain icons into the map to show what areas of town are being impacted. So we're able to keep up with that live versus having a meeting every four or five hours and trying to determine what streets are closed or what area the light department might be working on, we're able to track that real time Excellent. by the use of the board. Great. Uh, other things is we've been able to implement some um, shelter equipment and things of that nature through the grant program so that we can strengthen our shelter operations as well. Great. My name is Tom Kokranak. I'm a lieutenant with the Sterling Fire Department and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the equipment that was recently purchased through a state grant program um, to help develop what we call our, our Emergency Operations Center, or EOC, um, which is what we use um, during large-scale emergencies in town to help um, manage the situations. 
Um, this is located in the Sterling Fire Department on the second floor. Um, and the purpose of the EOC is basically to per give the emergency managers of the town, the police chief, fire chief, and other department heads uh, an environment to work in um, proactively to help try and manage whatever situation that we're, we're dealing with. Um, to look at some of the equipment that we have, um, over here we have essentially a radio console that has full capability, um, same as what our, our existing dispatch center has. So typically during a large scale emergency, we have our regular dispatch center. Um, they'll start receiving numerous calls and the activity at level in that dispatch center um, will start to increase to a point where um, we would have to kind of separate the roles of what communications is. So what will typically happen is our existing dispatch center becomes more of a call center and a lot of the radio um, activity that's done at the dispatch center, specific to the fire, police departments, things like that, we can transfer over to, the, over to this. Um, so it helps take the burden of doing both call taking and radio dispatching away from our 911 center. They can focus on call taking and we can use the equipment in the console over here um, to do um, all of the radio traffic and radio dispatching that has to take place with all of the town, uh, the town departments. Um, so we have full capability in the console to talk not only to Sterling, police, fire, EMS, DPW, all of that, but also to our surrounding towns, um, again, with police, fire, EMS. So if we're using any type of mutual aid situation where we have other communities in assisting us with the emergency, we have the ability to do that. Um, the computer system that we have in here um, is the, the uh, it's same computer system that our dispatchers uses. It's called a CAD system, a computer aided dispatch system. Um, and it has, it's basically a database that has information about all locations in town, all of the um, information for us, things like hydrant locations, um, all, all kinds of specific detailed information like that. And it allows us when we dispatch resources out to a call, we track where those resources go through this system. Um, so we'll record all the dispatch times, we'll be able to see the addresses that they go to. And all of this, as we, as we create calls and dispatch resources through the CAD system, it's real time and is connected to the, our, our uh, 911 dispatchers so that they see all that information changing dynamically in front, on their screen as well. So it's all tied in together. Um, an additional computer system that we have in, in here um, allows allows uh, us to have um, kind of a, a multimedia connection with our department members that have cell phones. So basically when we dispatch, whether it's done here or done at the, through our regular dispatch center, um, we have the ability when our, we tone out a call as we call it, um, we have the ability to broadcast that transmission direct to our members' cell phones as well. So. Um, they're not solely reliant on our radio system that we use in the trucks and to talk to our dispatcher for, for uh, dispatching. So if they're out of range of the radios, they can get the call on, on the cell phone as well. So we have that capability as well as a, uh, an uh, audio stream that we run over the internet. Um, so it's, if you're away from Sterling, doesn't matter where you are, as long as you have an internet connection, you can log into a website and you can listen to the radio traffic that um, the fire and police department um, is communicating um, through this service. So that, that capability runs out of here as well. We have additional monitors that allow us to pipe a variety of uh, graphic information through. Um, currently right here we have uh, the weather radar. So we have real time access to um, the, the Taunton National Weather Service radar. And then over here right now we have a map that it's showing Today it's showing where the active burning permits are for the day, so that updates real time as people call in to activate their burning permits. But we have other information that we could pipe through there, whether it's weather data, additional specific weather sites, things like that. Um, th there's a whole variety of things. So all that can be changed around dynamically based on whatever it is the need that, that we have for, for whatever incident we're trying to deal with. One of the more advanced pieces of technology that we were able to acquire through the grant program is our smart board. And what the, the smart board does, it allows us to load a variety of applications and um, process information dynamically and very graphically to help um, organize a lot of the different things that are going on during an emergency. Um, the particular screen that we have up right now is basically uh, shows a map of the town broken out into the different districts that we've, we have predetermined. 
and it allows us to kind of keep track of the things that could be going on during an emergency. You know, for example, we have different icons that we can use to kind of click and drag resources. For example, these are generators. We can show where emergency generators are getting deployed into uh, locations that may not have power. Um, we can document power outages, road closures, things like that, and just by simply just clicking and dragging um, these icons across the screen. Um, there's different um, graphs that we could, or different charts that we could put together. Um, simply by clicking different options, we can, um, for example, if we wanted to show a hazardous area up in this district here, we can just shade in that area and we can note that that's a, that particular area on the map is a, is a hazardous area. And then we can build this out pretty much however we want to build it based on, on the uh, emergency that's taking place. So a very, very useful tool for us. Um, over here, through the projector, um, we have a, a direct link to um, the Massachusetts Emergency Management Agency in uh, an application that's called, what we call Web EOC. And what this is is a link to um, the, the statewide activities that are going on um, whenever there's an emergency that involves, you know, like a weather emergency, something that's going on statewide. And this is, this is basically just streaming information um, that's coming out of each community throughout the Commonwealth that talks about all of the specific activities that could be going on in those communities. So this particular um, feed that's running now is actually the log that was kept during um, Hurricane Sandy. And you can see there's information that talks about um, details specific to power outages, road closures, um, areas of towns that are inaccessible, um, all kinds of very specific data community by community. Um, so a lot of very, very useful information there. Um, again, trying to create an environment that's good for the emergency managers to make, make decisions um, when managing an emergency in Sterling, a big part of that is keeping them informed so that they're making informed decisions. So that's what a lot of this is geared to do. It's helped to get the information to them and to help them to organize it and keep track of everything in a way that's going to um, allow us to get the best possible outcome. Um, over here we basically have uh, another whiteboard set up um, and then we have just a regular TV feed um, so that we have access to the local news agencies and the information that's being broadcast um, through the local news. And then um, we have a variety of uh, charts and um, forms that we use um, to essentially keep track of resources and information specific to those resources. Um, because not only is it important from an accountability standpoint in making sure that all the crews and everybody that's working out in the field is being properly accounted for during an incident, but from a document, documentation standpoint, when we go, get to the end of the incident and we start the recovery process where we are um, looking to get reimbursement at the state and federal levels from um, government agencies, we need to provide all of the detailed um, information specific to the resources that were deployed during the in, uh, incident um, in order to be eligible to get that money. So there's a lot of work that goes into that particular part of, uh, of, of the tracking. Um, I mean, they, they require information right down to the serial numbers of equipment that gets deployed to different locations um, during, during an event. Um, so we have a, all, a bunch of different tools that we use to do that. Tell us about the trip that your firefighters were able to organize to go down to New York and help in the aftermath of Hurricane Sandy. Sure, one of our full-time firefighters, Jamie Shea, uh, who's also a vice president of the Worcester Emerald Society, mm -hmm. organized a trip to Long Beach, New York, because he was uh, on that department years ago. Mm -hmm. And he had many friends in the firehouses who were all devastated by Hurricane Sandy. Right. Uh, he was able to organize a group of 32 volunteers that went down on November 18th to work in to uh, do some demolition and work on firehouses and some of the firefighters' own personal property. And uh, they made a whole day of it. They left at about four in the morning, got back at midnight, and they spent a good 10 or 12 hour day down there mm. working and, and making a difference to help people down in Long Beach. So Chief, probably the most important thing that our viewers really wanna know is 
What should they do to prepare for an emergency? Great. Um, I think one of the biggest things is uh, what we can find is in the emergency management guide that was sent out to residents. It has a good list in this as to the different uh, items that people can have for both if they're going to shelter in place in their homes or if they're actually going to evacuate to a, a shelter or to a family or friend's house. Uh, some of the things we have set up here today, uh, most importantly, is probably some form of communication, whether it's an AM, FM radio, uh, some people have iPhones or portable laptops and things of that nature. But this will allow them to at least monitor weather stations or local radio stations for important updates mm -hmm. that might go out from the town. If cable it isn't out, monitor the local cable television station for updates. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing is the town website. What we do is we provide a news and notices right. uh, format so that we can send out updates periodically throughout a storm. And then uh, by phone, we recently purchased a uh, reverse 911 system called Code Red right. that many people, over 3,000 different types of devices, have been signed up for the system. 3, so people can be notified by phone, by email, by cell phone, and things of that nature. So what that does is it allows us to send a message out to people telling them if there's a shelter open or if there's an evacuation of some type or, or things of that nature. Great. But uh, preparedness is key as far as uh, what they're recommending is keeping a gallon of water per day on hand. Mm -hmm. People should really plan to have to shelter in place without getting any type of help for up to 72 hours. So what that can mean is uh, non-perishable, ready-to-eat canned foods, uh, first aid kits, flashlights and extra mm -hmm. batteries, mm -hmm. um, the radios, something like this, some type of a, a, a multi-purpose tool that will allow them to open up these different canned foods and things of that need. Um, personal hygiene items are key, especially mm -hmm. if they're going to be evacuating uh, from their homes, uh, items that they need to survive. Medicines, medications, packing up enough medication for how long you might be out. Um, Communication plan with your family is key because a lot of times people may not be together when something devastating strikes. Right. So some type of plan in place where uh, you know how to get a hold of each other, whether it's a mm -hmm. meeting at a common place, a family or friend's house, or making notification to a family or friend that all are safe. Right. So some type of a communications plan is always key. Um, what they're recommending is uh, to have cash on hand because for long duration power outages, ah. uh, there may not be ATMs open mm -hmm. or credit card machines might not work. So they're recommending that you have some type of a, a stash of cash on hand in case you need that. Fueling up vehicles is extremely important. Um, if you're gonna shelter in place and you have a generator, generator safety is key. Uh, one of the things we found with the uh, ice storm of 2008 is a lot of people ran generators, but the key to that particularly is to make sure you have a uh, working carbon monoxide detector because generators do burn combustion gases or people might work on their wood stoves a lot more but the key is to make sure that that carbon monoxide is monitored to keep your family safe. Uh, the other thing is if you're going to use a generator make sure that it's installed properly or through a, a, a certified electrician Okay. because if it's not that power can actually be generated back through the transmission lines and it can be dangerous to the light department workers working on the lines. Okay. So you want to make sure that if you have a generator you're safe by making sure that the exhaust is, is outside and not getting into your home and the other part of that is to make mm -hmm. sure that it's hooked up properly. Um, and those are really some of the important things uh, if you have children and you're going to go to a shelter, bring some items for the, the children mm -hmm. to do. Uh, keep them occupied to keep them from being stir crazy. Um, and if you're not going to shelter, understand that a shelter is also available as a warming station. So if you're going to stay in your own home, you can usually get a hot meal, charge your cell phones, charge other things at this shelter, and then you can go back to the comforts of your oh, own great. home after that. Great. So a shelter doesn't necessarily mean you have to stay overnight, hmm. but it means it's a place where you can grab a warm meal if you need to or and things of that nature. So that's some of the key components. Very to, good. And a lot of these, if you go on to um, some of the federal, like the FEMA.gov websites or mm -hmm. the MEMA websites, mm -hmm. Or even, again, if you refer to the Disaster Preparedness Guide, mm -hmm. these checklists and all these items for preparedness are found in this document or on the websites. And it's a really good 
um, tool. And sometimes some people that I know uh, will actually have a bag that's prepared and ready. It's called a go kit. Good idea. And, and some of these websites will tell you what to build in this go kit. Okay. So that if when disaster strikes, you have the ability to survive. So, Chief, if people are looking for another copy of this disaster preparedness guide or they want more information, where do they go? Sure, there's a few links that people can uh, follow, but primarily the fire department link, www.sterlingfd.net, will get them the link to the disaster preparedness guide, as well as some other helpful uh, emergency links. They can call the main number at the fire department, which is 978 422-8107, or they can stop by, we're located right downtown Sterling at 5 Main Street. Uh, some of the other important links, again, they can sign up for Code Red, either through the town's website or the fire department's website, which is the reverse notification system that the town has set up. And they can also notify uh, online to Red Cross, www.redcross.org, Ready America, www.ready.gov, which is going to give them a lot of the emergency preparedness supplies that we talked about. Uh, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA.gov, is probably one of the best ones as far as preparedness for any type of disaster. They usually come out with uh, highlights of all the different types of disasters throughout the year. So those are just some to name a few, mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of them you can find in the links that I've described. Well, thank you very much, Chief David Hurlbut, for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. And I want to thank all the viewers for watching. I want to thank the SLCT crew, Matt, Chris, David, and Andy. I'm your host, Terry Ackerman. This is Faces of Sterling. We'll see you next time.